Good afternoon. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and I would like to thank the Springfield team uh, for inviting me to present uh, today at this fifth annual uh, TEDx. Uh, it's doubly exciting, uh, as a researcher and scientist formally, uh, to be celebrating the 100th year uh, of Einstein's uh, theory on relativity with a theme today uh, on reimagining, uh, reinventing, uh, and looking at fresh interpretations as evidenced by the speakers this morning and, and later this afternoon. As an introduction, my name is Dr. Bill Gavin. Uh, I'm a president of uh, LFB USA, uh, which is a biopharmaceutical company uh, located here uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, my background uh, is I'm a veterinarian by degree, uh, and I'm also an embryologist uh, by training. Um, I have a particular interest in the study of reproduction, uh, theorial genealogy, uh, with a specific emphasis on genetic engineering uh, of dairy animals. Uh, in particular, what we call transgenic animals uh, for the production of uh, recombinant protein therapeutics or those drugs uh, made by genetic engineering uh, or in this case, more simply, medicines in milk. <clears throat> I'm here today to talk to you about uh, something that fascinates me uh, and that we've worked on uh, over the years uh, called somatic cell nuclear transfer uh, or cloning. Uh, that we have uh, published and, and patented on uh, over the years. Uh, I promise to you uh, that I will try and follow one of my own mantras uh, that I put out to people called Bill's Three Bs. Be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. So I'll try and do that to you today. With that said, can anybody tell me who this is? Yell it out. Amazing. Arguably, uh, one of the most uh, important animals. In 1997, uh, almost 20 years ago now, uh, the announcement of successful cloning of an adult animal was a remarkable uh, achievement. Um, and it was done uh, by uh, the late uh, Keith Campbell, uh, unfortunately who we lost recently, uh, as well as uh, Dr. Uh, Ian Wilman. It represented years and years of work uh, exploring uh, and uncovering uh, the keys to nuclear reprogramming. The cloning of Dolly uh, enabled us to use uh, fully differentiated somatic cells to be used in cloning procedures. Uh, and in cloning, we utilize an unfertilized and a nucleated egg, um, which is mechanically removing the genetic material, to remodel that somatic cell that you put in there uh, that we then transfer into a recipient animal uh, and an animal uh, is produced that is an exact genetic copy, and in this case, the sheep. This was a remarkable, as I said, uh, breakthrough, uh, an achievement uh, by those scientists. As you can see, uh, the list of animals to date now uh, that have been cloned uh, in the last 20 years is, is quite remarkable. Not only the sheep, as Dolly represents, uh, but the goat, the cow, pig, the horse, the dog, the cat, many species, as well as a number of exotic and endangered species. However, what did uh, this body of work and the first cloned animal uh, truly represent? What was that breakthrough? It is no well known that experiments uh, had been performed uh, dating back to the early 1900s on cloning. When Hans Spiemann cloned the salamander, uh, later in the 50s when uh, John Gordon, a Nobel Prize winner, uh, cloned frogs, and subsequent to that uh, when hundreds of cattle, pigs, sheep, goats were produced in the 80s and 90s, but all by embryo cloning. So what was new or different about the cloning this time? Well, the breakthrough was using the fully differentiated uh, cells, or somatic cells, uh, as they are called or are known. Previously, the cloning work that was performed uh, was able to use early stage only uh, blastomeres from embryos at the four, eight, or 16 cell stage. And they're limited in number and availability. The key breakthrough that was more recent body of work uh, in the field of cloning illustrates is the understanding and hence the ability and methodology to reprogram the mammalian somatic cell nucleus. 
and to do this in such a way that the nucleus goes back in developmental time, so to speak, and behaves like an embryo uh, and becomes a totipotent, as they call it, cell, meaning able to become any cell in the body. For as long as, as I can remember, we were all taught as students uh, that once a cell differentiates or moves through that differentiation pathway, um, it is set in time. However, once this reprogramming was understood and achieved in the evidence of uh, Dolly and the cloning work, uh, it was an incredible success. Now, to perform cloning, one could use an unlimited supply of somatic or differentiated cells. And the list of cells are at the bottom of this table uh, that have been used now to date include the fibroblast cell, skin cell, muscle cell, blood cell, cumulus cell, nerve cell. It's remarkable. Any cell uh, can be used. So looking under a high power microscope, this is what fascinates and drives me. I love working uh, in reproduction and, and with embryology. The picture you see in front of you uh, is a four cell cloned uh, goat embryo just prior uh, to being transferred into a suitable uh, recipient animal. And these uh, were the first cloned goats that were only produced uh, from this work uh, and done right in this area uh, in central Massachusetts. Now the somatic cell cloning is routine and performed in many settings by many groups, the possibilities for its use uh, and application are remarkable. From the perspective of what we do uh, as a company, utilizing cloned animals to produce uh, goats, in this case, specifically engineered to produce recombinant therapeutics in their milk and doing that consistently uh, is very appealing and allows for a more uniform production of that drug. However, there are many other uh, applications for cloning uh, that have already been used to date over the last 20 years to include generation of cloned animals for species preservation, uh, for uh, generating animals with unique genetic traits or unique genetic manipulations, uh, producing cloned animals for biomedical research, uh, as well as propagating uh, uh, valued genetics uh, in the species such as the cattle and the horse industry, and that's a very large growing industry today. I mentioned that we generated our cloned goats, and that was in 1999. And early on in the years of cloning, many questioned the health of cloned animals uh, and whether they were prematurely aging. Uh, and then what they meant by that was did they have shortened telomeres at the end of their chromosomes, which is evidence of aging. Here are those same three goats 13 years later, and they're still happy and healthy after a good long life. Uh, we closely monitored these goats throughout their life and documented and published that they behave and react as they uh, would any other goat, and they faced all the same kinds of clinical events uh, as they grew and matured, and ultimately they aged just as any other goat would. However, one thing we did learn, and that was very surprising, is that the animals generated by cloning are not always exactly uh, as you would expect. While they are genetically identical at the DNA level, they can and do show differences at the phenotypic level. It goes back to the old time-honored debate, nature versus nurture. Without a doubt, your environment and what you are exposed to from birth to death has the ability to have remarkable influence and impact on how your DNA is expressed and how physiologically uh, our bodies behave and present themselves, hence one's phenotype. This is a study of epigenetics now, which is an exploding field uh, and quite remarkable in companies uh, being developed to look at that. So when considering cloning, don't always think that the animal you will get, while yes, an exact DNA uh, genetic duplicate, will always be exactly as you had expected or hoped for. So I'd like to end today's talk on cloning by considering even more dramatic outcomes that came from this work over the last 20 years. You may wonder, what else uh, has this breakthrough in cloning led to? 
I would put forth that the incredible amount of scientific investigation and work into reprogramming of the somatic cell through the cloning procedures uh, was paramount to the progress that was made in the field of stem cell research over the last 10, 15 years. The understanding of the mechanisms involved in the chromosome, at the chromosomal and the gene level uh, from uh, cloning and, and <clears throat> reprogramming uh, of the somatic cell led the foundation of stem cell biology today. The realization that somatic cells could be reprogrammed uh, through cloning uh, led to the discoveries of direct induction um, of stem cells from adult cells, as well as the understanding of stem cell function and how to establish and maintain stem cells uh, in proper culture conditions. Look where this has grown to today. For the first ever cell therapies are now being explored in human clinical trials as we speak uh, and hopefully can lead soon to remarkable advances in therapies for patients with debilitating diseases uh, such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, muscular dystrophy. The therapeutic possibilities uh, and what is being explored today are endless uh, and very, very exciting to see that 20 years later. Finally, the work described here today and my personal views uh, in this area have taught me one thing. The more we explore and investigate and learn, the more we learn how much we still don't know. Uh, and to me, that's the endless gift of scientific investigation and endeavors uh, that around every corner of exploration, we will find more and more to challenge uh, our thinking and understanding of the world around us. As well, what we learn and share with the broader scientific community, more often than not, leads to whole other and sometimes unrelated uh, or unexpected developments in other fields of investigation. So I want to thank you for your time and your attention today, and I hope that in a small way, uh, my talk broadened your understanding of cloning and opened your mind to even bigger and better things still to come for the next 20 years. <laughs>